you are, your office, your bedroom, your kitchen, living room. I just um, I just want to kind of talk about one of my favorite subjects, of course, which is uh, all things Bible. But uh, today I really do have something to share. Uh, I want to share what I'm calling a wonder and a sign. You know, sometimes these are kind of dark times and people wonder, where's God? I mean, this is this is pretty serious. And I mean, of course, I have a lot of ideas and opinions of what's going on, but I won't go through that today. What I want to, I want to give an encouraging message. And I want to say that God is everywhere. Elohim, our Father, is everywhere. And I will want to give you something that you can carry with you. And every time you look in the mirror, every time you look at your child, Every time you look at your favorite, you know, your dog, your pet, uh, you will see and it'll confirm to you that God is with you. See, it almost made me want to cry. Sometimes the the profoundness of the word. But anyways, okay. In uh, the world, okay, we have, we kind of live in a secular mindset today. It's very hard to penetrate sometimes. Sort of this barrier that people put up. Uh, in, 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 a, in a secular mindset to talking about things about God. But, you know, I want to make it really easy on one level, and I, this is a major takeaway, to prove. I can prove to you <laughs> the way science likes it, all right? Empirically, provably, let's see, re, re, em, empirically, repeatably, in a provable and an observable way that, yes, there's absolutely is intelligent design. It is called the word of God. And as John, the great, uh, from, for, from John the, of the New Testament, in his great gospel, some most beautiful words that have ever been penned, uh, he goes, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and nothing was made except through this word. All right. Now, those are actually in Greek. I, You know, we're going to get there. We will get a Hebrew New Testament, I do believe, before Yeshua returns. But in the meantime, Greek is adequate in this sense. Because to look at two key words in the Greek, in the beginning was the word. The word there is the word logos. And the word was God is the Greek word theos. But theos, theology, uh, theocracy, these are words that they be, they begin, lo, um, theo be, is a word for God. So it's, it's a God uh, word. And then the word logos, I said, is word. But there's not, it's, it's a formula you have to understand. The word is God, God is the word. You can't separate the two. Just like, you know, I have a body, but I also have, you know, this this mind and soul life. I have um, words projecting out of you. Can't really separate the two uh, until I until a person dies. That's usually when the world says that their soul leaves their body. But normally in in life today, they're pretty contained. You just you get one, you get the other. But in terms of a wonder and a sign, I want to show you share something about Hebrew. That and I was telling you, well, and I want to thank again everyone who came to my husband's memorial service. It was just a beautiful experience. But Dennis and I were learning Hebrew, uh, and we had really, and I'm so happy we had really started learning it. We were um, learning to pronounce it, learning the meanings, learning how to group, you know, cite, read some words, uh, the vowels, how it all plays in, and it was extremely enriching. I'll tell you, if you're stagnating in your spiritual life, or if you need some empirical evidence of, of, of God, of Elohim, then, then get into the Hebrew. Uh, I can be so bold as to say uh, there's many things going on in the world today. The Spirit is being poured out, but one of the things the Spirit is pouring out is this burning desire. It's everywhere, and it's really hitting the Christian church like a flood to learn Hebrew, to go back to the letters. Okay, but in these letters is so much, oh my gosh, uh, information, it is the code of life. He, he, you know, I am the word, Yeshua said. Well, what did he really mean? Well, we're, when you think of Elohim, he's alive, he's living, he's intelligent, he's eternal. He is, um, 
you know, one of one of the beautiful words I like in Hebrew is he's the beauty of Israel. He is the most glorious um, thing that there is. There's nothing greater and more glorious, more beautiful. And in the the letters alphabet truly shows his glory in incomprehensible ways. So I'm going to share with you one now. Uh, I, I want to make sure I feel like I could, there was something I wanted to say that I didn't say, but either way, we'll come back to it. All right. Here's just a little chart I made. It's very, um, it'll serve the purpose, but there's something here I want to show you that is embedded in the Hebrew that if people can grasp this, this is, this is, like I said, repeatable, provable, observable, and dependable. All right. I have a formula here, eyes, nose, and mouth. Nose is in the middle, eyes are above, and mouth below on this little chart. Okay, well, let's just play a game. This can you do with your kids. Do this with the dinner table. Do this everywhere you go now. Whenever you look at your dog, whenever you look at anything in creation, where, close your eyes and put your, put your finger on your nose, right? You go to the middle of your face. You don't go down below your chin. You don't go, you go to the middle. You go to your nose in the middle. When you, I say, point to your eyes, close your, you know, close your eyes. You always go above the nose. You always go up here it's to, to the top of your skull. And when I say point to your mouth, right? I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. The mouth is below. Well, what if I could prove to you that this is the absolutely formulaic way that the word is laid out that completely designates this and this the nose in the middle the eyes above and the mouth below is on an imprint it is a seal it is an imprint it is on all of creation without exception and once you kind of get it i want you to spend the next week just go around and look at every living thing you can find go on google tonight with your kids prove it Every animal, fish, bird, human, and even like aliens, go on a, a, an alien game or in a movie. You know, even they all have, all of us are made with this seal, this face, with the nose in the middle, the eyes above, and the mouth below. All right? Now that's beyond, uh, there's no chance in that. That, that's divine intelligence. There's no other, um, there's no other way you can express that. That's intelligent design. And it's done that way on purpose. And it's in the letters are the ones that do this. All right. So in the Hebrew, these letters are shin, which is right here is a shin, aleph, right here is an aleph, and mem which is uh, right here. Now, what these mean, again, in the Hebrew, the word, let's just start with Aleph. Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And, you know, I have a YouTube channel where I really teach a lot of depth. I teach a lot of meat, much more depth on this. But I wanted to just, you know, pick your interest. But, uh, there's a whole lot of symbolism in this Aleph, which actually, if you take it apart, me me mechanistically, me oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Machine, mission, how oh, forget it. <laughs> uh, it's two yodes and a vav. That's what it's made of. All right. And then the mem, this symbol here is, uh, it has an opening here. Everything about these letters gives you tremendous information. But to, in, in the Hebrew, let's just say, shin is the word for light. It actually is uh, spelled, it's an ayan. It has the, the word ayan, which symbols of the eye, it's actually an eye, pictographically. There's no getting around it. It's embedded in this, in this letter, which is here, which also is made up of four other letters. So shin is just a letter, but actually when you spell it out, embedded inside of it even, is more letters. All right? A shemek, hey, and a noon. 
okay? Now, which is all very important in, again, getting more information. See, the thing about Hebrew, it's like, it's not, it's not like a language, it's a chemical language. It, it's made to embed information. And it's why the word of God, it's the word contains all things pertaining to life and godliness. Everything that we need to know about God is in the letters, which makes up the word, which, you know, ultimately translates into Torah. It's no accident. So this shin, which means eyes, which means light. Obviously, what do we do with our eyes? We see, right? And what do we need to see? We need light. So these words, it's all circular reasoning. And everything equals everything else. So it's very, very neat and tidy. There's no, it's very logical, linear, and subset upon subset in the letters and it's empirical each one of these is also a number and if you go into the gematria what they what they how they preserve the perfection of the word is certain when you add up the the value of the letters and then it relates to other letters with that other words that have that same value and there's all this it's past finding out i mean this is what the torah sages the, the, the prophets, the rabbis, the priests, those who have preserved our word for us for, for millennia, thousands of years, have, have mastered. That's why they call them masters of Torah. Okay, they understand this language in its in, in most minute uh, in detail. Now, the Aleph is in the middle here. Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And again, that's no accident. And this is akin, Aleph is akin to the word breath. It's air. This, what do we breathe in our nose? See, we see with our eyes, we breathe with our nose. And what's down here? This is called Mem. This is the symbol for water, the letter, the glyph for water. And water is the mouth. But what's in our mouth? Seriously, water with the saliva and what it represents now. In other ways, so the eye is the light of the body. All information comes in through the eyes. The nose breathes in a the breath of life, which you know, and in, in, you know, Elohim, Elohim says, "I'm closer than your very breath." How intimate. A lot of the scriptures will talk about the intimacy of Elohim with us. He's closer than our very breath. He is our breath. <laughs> and the mem is the water. And what water signifies is, is like um, almost in our mouths is, is the earth. We, we, everything that goes into our mouth, food and water, all, all our properties, they are all indicative of things that come from the earth. All right. You you um you chew, you eat, you swallow, you talk, you everything with the mouth. All right. And it's a quint to men. Now, this happens to be the engraved image on all creation. And I just for argument's sake, Google tonight with your kids. Google at the dinner table. Google it on Go look at every animal in all of creation and you will always see that they have, and all humans, all fish, all birds, all insects. Insects are the funnest to look at because they have such bizarre faces, but they all have <laughs> eyes above, nose in the middle, and a mouth below. All of them. So you have to, then there's tons of, why? Why these systems are placed in this order why all of creation functions with that same face and physiology that's running through its whole system and why and and so these letters these letters in hebrew are called the three mothers now this i will tell you this information is uh they would say it goes back to abraham actually i mean i think it goes further because abraham a lot of people like to whole, start the whole story with Abraham, and it is sort of a restart of the story. But all the way back to Adam, Adam walked out of the garden, so to speak, understanding 
because he named the animals. See, people think that that's such a silly little story. You have no idea what Adam was doing. This this supercomputer, this guy with a with a with a supercomputer mind who could look at all of creation and understand, put together the eyes, the nose, and understand its systems, its purpose, what it was for, its future, its short sight. You know what what could possibly be lacking, and he named them all with the letters. I mean, this is so, such an, I don't know why, and, and it's so unfortunate that Christianity that we have sort of lost, here I'm trying to keep this up, have lost this, this appreciation and this understanding that our texts have to stay. If we want to have accurate renderings, we have to go back to the Hebrew. We have to reconstruct from the Hebrew, which has never been lost, never been lost, and what is intrinsic what is the essence in these letters and then as they build worlds so um let me put this out let me just say a few things about how this whole system of the letters the word see and i think this is something a revolutionary mindset on the christian mind because i don't think we've thought i don't think we've truly connected in a lot of ways what the word of Elohim is. Now, the word of Elohim, believe me, is alive, intelligent. It is God, remember? <laughs> you can't separate the two. He is, um, he, that's why he says, Asher, 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 Asher. I am that I am. I am what I am. Okay? See me? That's, that's it. I am the word and I am God, Elohim. Another way this equates is the king and the kingdom. A lot of times the scriptures will use this concept. And, and we are even at the end of this age, which, you know, for most people to understand it correctly, it's not the end of the world. You know, it will be. The, for, it's the end of an age. What it is, it's the end of the, the it says the end of the, the government, that the, 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 the rule of this world will no longer be under um, Hasatan and wicked um principalities it will go back to its original owner which is Yahweh Elohim and it will be a peaceable kingdom because everybody will know and understand the letters what they say even down to the commandments and nobody will be confused and no one will be everyone will be without excuse because it's basically you know a pretty easy system to learn well surfacely on the surface it is okay but this is part of where we're going this is when it says that all things will come out in the end there will be nothing hidden that will not be known a lot of the deep embedded truth that is empirical in scriptures that has been clouded for thousands of years really by bad translations in some respects or by just you know not under just i call it the shot level that just like um just the literal Believe me, the word has got tons and tons of levels of meaning to it. So there's not just one meaning. There are many, 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 many meanings. And that's what makes it so exciting and worth studying. So you can think of this another way today. We have, um, you know, we're very familiar with computer programming. I mean, I'm here on Facebook live stream, which, and I'm surrounded by other tech gadgets. But the point is, we have learned how to communicate uh and it doesn't have to be face to face anymore it can be on waves light waves and sound waves and all these different ways in which they now they can take information and transfer the light you see me you not only see me you hear me and you know i'm alive i'm breathing you know <laughs> so but it's like computers it's like you can compare it to the software and the hardware all right the hardware is like the letters okay that's the actual constructive codes well and then there's the software so i guess see these these letters actually print and combine in different ways to print in essence computer programs that create worlds and systems and things and it's embedded in the dna it's incredible how precise ordered logical 
if left on its own and in perfect balance, the creation is and the people in it could be. <laughs> so this is something looking at like a computer, you have software and you have hardware. You have what's made up, and this is also embedded in the words, is uh, that, okay, so the word, each of these, you know, combined Hebrew words have intrinsic meaning. So voice, voice is a very important word, but it translates uh, to vibration. Okay, now let me just tell you one more almost empirical proof that, you know, breath is the firmament. And if you really want to know, if you if you were to graph out the, um, this is the upper heavens in a, in, in, on all levels. So on different levels, you can graph this out. So spiritually, we see with spiritual eyes, um, the nose, this area is called the firmament. It's a separation when he, when it says in Genesis that the father, uh, Elohim, separated the upper waters from the lower waters and he put a firmament that's the letter aleph that's what i was saying if you turn it this way so you can uh it's two yodes a yod above and a yod below and a bob in the up uh, through the middle there's so much that you can but uh i was going to a point okay so voice uh which is akin to vibration all right and light waves so we have and then you have bits. So you can take this and think of it like, okay, so you have voice, you have light, and you have bits of information. And all of those go together uh, to create 3D, you know, not flat, um, sophisticated living. This is what the Bible says in the Hebrew, uh, nefesh chai, nefesh chai, or living souls. This whole system is designed to create living souls. And this whole system is imprinted on everything in that creation. Now you can't make that up. <laughs> I don't, you know, you can't deny it because you're gonna walk around now when you look in the mirror and you're gonna see that your nose is in the middle of your Face, and your mouth is below and your eyes are above and they all have specific and you cannot make your nose see and you cannot make your mouth breathe well i shouldn't you know we can breathe in but breathe you know you can't make your mouth see all right they're very very and they're meant to stay in there <clears throat> okay that's what i mean so you have a voice we have a sound wave we have a light wave, and then you have a bit, the bits, the basic units of information, which are our letters. That is the same construct <clears throat> that is going on all the time, day in and day out, where it says the whole heavens declare the glory of Elohim. Their, their voice goes out into all the earth. These systems operate galactically, um, quantumly, and physically so <clears throat> there also let me say one last thing about this because i want to um there what i was trying to encourage christians i'm trying to encourage my christian friends take this walk down into the hebrew roots you'll you will never be sad this is our heritage this is who we are as i've said before i'm trying to get my people that i know and that know me <laughs> We're, we're Hebrews. We are the law sheet of the house of Israel. Biblically, we are called Ephraim or, you know, the house of Israel. We're Israel in that sense. But let me show you again how even in that concept, because, you know, Yeshua said, well, it's been going on for two days, why well, 2,000 years, you know, he came the first time, he's coming again, but it's obviously been 2,000 years, so what's why does that have to why do you have to have this big weight well because even as yeshua said he said i have come for the lost sheep of the house of israel now let me give you another empirical observable seal of that truth in the hebrew letters all right i told you that every letter is a number and when you and they should all bear witness. See, there's no contradiction. Everything bears witness to the truth. 
So the word 12 in Hebrew, all right, first of all, it's made up of two words, the way it works. It's made up of a, of a, of a, yod, of, of a two and a 10. So a two is numerical two and the word for 10 together, that makes 12. So if I told you that the North, and they always equate the math of the Northern Kingdom, they call it the, you know, two tribes versus 10 tribes. So even in the letters that make up the number 12, which is an overarching code word for the 12 tribes, it's made up of two words, a 10 and a two, and that is a pictograph that is the exact way to look at the way we are today. We're Ephraim, the multiplied seed of Yahweh in the earth of Abraham, and you have um, the Jews today, which are basically made up of, of two tribes and a lot of people that have joined on to that. I mean, so you can't, like I said, you can't make this stuff up. So that's why I keep, I'm encouraging people, this is, this is, we're in lockdown, redeem the time, get in, get deeper into your Hebrew roots, understand your Jewish rabbi, teacher, Yeshua, uh, and uh, get into these letters. It's it's positive, it's repeatable, it's dependable. And if you ever doubt that God is real, just look at your face. Look at the face of your grandchild. Only God could make that beautiful, perfect face. Oh, I'm sure you would agree with me. That makes me want to cry. Anyways, it's time for me to go start some dinner. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back Facebook Live, so enjoy. Share, come to my YouTube channel. Uh, and I also have a, a Facebook page, The Elect Life. So, shalom.